we are very clear in our mind that the EC are the stakeholder to bring about a peaceful electioneering processes, but ensure that they have done all that they need to do that doesn't raise any eyebrows to any of the political parties that are involved in the election hearing. Now, I, I have seen and heard the comments that have come from the NDC. I'm very certain that as a political party, our director of elections will respond, but I'm picking it up from a government angle so that we can be sure that this election is going to be peaceful, it's going to be free, it's going to be fair, and I'm glad that the Electoral Commission has taken steps to suspend their electoral officer um, who did that transfer. Um, it wouldn't be too far-fetched, but I'm considering the time of asking for a forensic audit into this. I'm aware that the EC is supposed to provide the numbers and the names of persons that have already registered whose names have been captured into the voters' register for the 2024 general election. And so I'm looking forward that all the political parties will have an opportunity of reviewing that. If any of the political parties have challenges, they can be able to raise that with the Electoral Commission. But from a government position, we are very clear in our mind that this election must be conducted in a free and fair manner. We are very clear in our mind that no political party should be disenfranchised. We are very clear in our mind that every single person that has registered to exercise their democratic rights and franchise on the 7th of December should have an opportunity. We're also very clear in our mind that every person that transferred their vote to places where they would want to exercise their democratic rights and franchise should be given the opportunity to do that. And so this would be from our government position on that issue. Now, um... One of the other things uh, that the NDC uh, has said, for example, is that these are calculated and deliberate attempts, you know, by the EC in cahoots with the MPP to try and uh, mar the whole electoral process or try and do the bidding of the NPP. Do you do you find any merit in that? I, I entirely disagree because. The EC is a very independent body from the new patriotic party. And I'm very certain that there are issues that we as a political party would also have uh, concerning the election commission that we have addressed. And uh, we have mentioned that also publicly as well. So um, there is no way that the EC is in bed with the new patriotic party or the new patriotic mm. party is in bed with the election commission. We well, of, of course, they, they, they go back we to... Are going into, we're going back into this election. Mm. Um, also to win the election, we are very clear in our mind that in going into the election as well, we are presenting our candidate, Al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is doing various campaigning tours around the country. And so we are sure that the Ghanaian people who make a decision would make a decision based on the policies that we are turning out to the good people of this country. Now, I mean, they make these uh, accusations and allegations based on uh, certain appointments that have been made by the president to the EC that they believe are, are partisan. You know, besides the instance of uh, Dr. Pian Hene, for example, who is in charge of IT, among other things, which gives people the impression that uh, when some of these infractions begin to happen, then um, it, 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 it gives credence or it lends credence to claims that the EC uh, is in cahoots with, with the MPP. Not at all. I mean, you know, we need to we need to understand the role of the EC. I mean, these appointments that are made are not appointments that would influence any decision that the Ghanaian people would make in the electoral process. Not at all. And if you ask Dr. Farijan, who has been the longest serving EC, who has transcended the US government, he will be able to tell you that if the president has made two appointments and uh the political affiliation or orientation of the persons that have been appointed are tilted towards the new patriotic party. Kabi, the Ghanaian people are going to vote, and the EC is going to call it the results, and the returning officer for the presidential election is going to declare the results. It's not, it's not, it's going on nothing at all whatsoever to do. And I would just want to alleviate the fears of the NDC. They should go on the ground to campaign. They should let the Ghanaian people understand what they so desire to do 
Um, if the Ghanaian people give them opportunity, that should be their mandate. And then um, all of us should allow the EC to work in the manner in which they want to work. If we have challenges and concerns, we should raise those challenges and concerns and not bring the new patriotic party in or to bring government in. We have issues with the EC. We raise it up with the EC and we let the Ghanaian people know that we are concerned in these places. Um, that if you are aware that there's going to be an election um, in Wale Wale um, on the on the eighth sometime this week as well. We're working very hard um, to do our internal primaries, and so I mean we we want to work with the EC and wherever we have challenges with the EC, we voice it out as well. And right? so there's no way the new patriotic party or the government is in bed with the election commission. Now, um, um, from a governance point of view, or from a governance perspective, of course, you're a spokesperson on governance and security. Um, do such appointments not have the tendency to give people a certain perception or to fuel a certain perception, even if it is not true, about the independence and, you know, the, um, the yes, about the independence of the EC or trusting the EC to do the right thing? I think that the overarching goal of governance really is that we have the public servants and the civil servants who work continually and who transcend their work um, from different political regime or from different um, governmental dispensational regimes. I mean, we have that ongoing every now and then. And so if you want to state that appointments that are made, uh, which are either uh, policy representative appointments, so the president would appoint the ministers who are policy uh, implementers of the vision of the president, the president would appoint the MCs, the DCs, um, who are also representatives of the president at the local level. I mean, if you see that a president has any appointment, there is no way that anybody in their right thinking would think that he influences anything. It's entirely part of the entire governance structure. And I think that I, I, I don't blame the president for making the appointments that he has made. I commend the president for ensuring that the Ghanaian people have an opportunity to work in various places that they so desire. And the president gives them those opportunities. We cannot live in a country where on a, every single basis we are politicizing every single appointment that is made. I mean, that is, that is to state that then we should, we should run the country on a political and um, partisan basis. But I don't think that the well-meaning public servants and civil servants who work very hard and tirelessly for this country are interested in anything that happens in the political dispensation. I think that their will and service is to render their public services to the good people of this country. And if they do so, do so. I think that we must commend them. And so we should move away from politicizing every single thing. Very well. Uh, Dr. Palgrave, watch it, I'm grateful that you spoke to us here on the Morning Star. Thank you for the opportunity. Dr. Palgrave of Wachidankwa is government spokesperson on governance and security speaking to us this morning here on Star 103.5 FM. Let's have breakfast on the